So the students in this school in the beautiful city Villanueva de la Serena in Spain wanted to speak to astronaut Christopher Cassidy on board the International Space Station. But they are also scattered at their home because of the Covid pandemic. So they are connecting via the internet to this radio station in Belgium near the beautiful city of Antwerp. From here the actual radio contact is made with the astronauts on board the ISS. The ISS broadcasts back to Earth and so I am able to receive the conversation here in the beautiful city of Bucharest, Romania. Not the students' questions, just the answers. So, in short, students in Spain connect through the internet with the radio station in Belgium, which make radio contact with the ISS, the space station transmits back to Earth and I am able to receive it in Romania. Because at the beginning of the interview, the station was below the horizon from my point of view, it was not possible for me to catch the first minutes. But with the authority invested in me by the power of technology, I will add this part as it was broadcasted on YouTube on Aris channel. And to make it even more convenient, I will insert students' questions recorded from the same stream. Enjoy! Okay, Oscar Romeo 4 ISS, I heard you in the noise. You are a little bit in the noise, so it will be better in the next over, I think. Uh, you're popping just over the horizon, Chris. Uh, uh, are you ready for questions? Over. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, I am ready for questions. Over. So, students, go ahead. Over. This is Paula. Due to COVID, we have to stay at home. Do you have any advice for us? Over. Uh, hi, Paula. Yeah, it's difficult to stay at home uh, and and uh, and do what you think is a, a, a normal. My advice to you is keep a routine. Do what you would do on a normal school day. Wake up at the same time, have breakfast, change clothes, and go to a different room and do do your work. Uh, and take a break for lunch. Take a break when you would rotate to a different classroom, perhaps. Uh, and then at the end of the day, uh, change your clothes and, and, and pretend like you're going just arriving home. I think it's most important to maintain a normal schedule uh, to, to stay productive over. This is Jesus. Do you think that the Astro B robot is the beginning of a new generation of robots that would work in the ISS? Over. Hey, Jesus, that's a great question. We. Uh, I've used the Astro B robot several times, and they're very interesting. Uh, I actually, seven years ago, worked with the first generation, uh, kind of the, uh, the parent of Astro B, which was called Spheres, and those were interesting as well. We had uh, students just like you could can write the computer code and manipulate the, uh, the algorithms. I think that it's wonderful to see Astro B and, and with advancing technologies, it could be very, very helpful for us as astronauts on board the International Space Station. Over. This is Ivan. Does weightlessness affect your thinking? Over. Hi, Ivan. Uh, I don't think it affects our thinking, the weightlessness aspect of it. We're up here, we are, we are living in our workplace, much like you guys now with uh, COVID stay-at-home rules. You're, you're living in your workplace. And uh, it, you... You sometimes uh, get, I don't want to say forgetful, but you, you start seeing the same things. And, uh, and so what affects your thinking is more the fact that you, you never leave the same building. And, uh, and we work very hard, and so we try, we try to maintain our sleep schedule as best we can. And we, have, we do have a day off on Sunday, so, so it's nice to, uh, to rest. We take rest very seriously so that our thinking is sharp and we stay uh, ready to do uh, our work at a peak performance. Over. Hi, this is Antonio. How do you get fit if you are at zero gravity? Over. Hi, Antonio. Uh, up here on the International Space Station, we have uh, several exercise devices, a bicycle, a treadmill, and a weightlifting. 
Testing Machine. Uh, they all have acronyms that stand for certain things, but that, that's what they are. The weight listening machine is, is our most important piece of equipment to keep our phones healthy. We need to put a uh, load on our phones so that they stay fit and strong. If we did not, our phones would become frail and brittle and we'd be susceptible to breaking, breaking bones. We exercise, it takes about one hour to do the weightlifting each day, and we do 30 minutes on either the bicycle or the treadmill. Over. This is David. What do you do to entertain yourself in the ice? Over. Well, David, we have lots of things to do, many of which you can do on Earth. Uh, watch movies, watch uh, a show, read a book, uh, talk with our friends. If you like music, there's several in musical instruments up here, a keyboard, a ukulele, a harmonica, uh, and that kind of thing. Uh, but what I like to do is just look out the window, because that's something you can't do on Earth, and uh, is watch Earth go by. And so that's what uh, most of us do is to entertain ourselves, is enjoy the beautiful view out the window. Over. Hi, this is Paola. After living in a space, have you gained any perspective on life and our everyday problems? Over. Paola, uh, yes. Uh, it's looking down at a planet from here, you just see the, the twirling colors of blues and browns and white clouds and, and uh, all mixed together to, to form our, our planet. And off on the horizon you see the scalar atmosphere that uh, is keeping us all alive and, and it makes you realize that Earth is a spaceship for seven billion astronauts and you, you are uh, several of them. Uh, so it, it may, gives me this perspective that we must take care of Earth like it's our spaceship, just like we are taking care of this spaceship that we are living on right now, over. This is Carlos. Did you feel sick while you were in the rocket? Over. Uh, I did not feel sick when I was in the rocket. We, we all take motion sickness medication on, right before the launch, just like you would if you were on a, a sailboat and going to the rough ocean, uh, because we don't want to be sick once we uh, get to space. We need to still perform our duties. So we do take medicine just in case, but on, this is my third mission and I have not uh, felt sick on any prior Higher time, but it can happen, and it can happen unexpectedly to anybody at any time. Over. This is Jose Manuel. What inspired you the most to become an astronaut? Over. Jose Manuel, the, what inspired me most about to become an astronaut was the, the the excitement of the career. That's what first lured me to it. I thought it would be really neat to put on a spacesuit. Then I met somebody who had been an astronaut, and and I became even more motivated. Uh, but it wasn't until I, I uh, really got serious about the application that I learned more that uh, what I like is that every every day is different. You're training a lot. Many days you're training. You're in Houston. You're in uh, Japan. You're in Russia. You're in uh, Europe, Canada, and, uh, and we have many international friends and international travel and, and uh, training. This is Elisa. What is the basis of your diet? Over. Well, our diet is very much no normal as we can try. Without, we, we don't have fresh fruits and vegetables all the time. Occasionally we get, we get delivered fresh fruits and vegetables on a cargo ship that uh, arrives, and, and those are the first things we, we pull out and we eat them as quickly as we can before they go bad. But the bulk of our food is made in food laboratories in, in Moscow and in Houston where uh, they prepare the food and then package it sometimes where we need to add water to the food to, to rehydrate it to make it edible and other times it's just regular food put into a can or a bag and we just open the can or the bag and we eat it and it has there's meat, fish, chicken, uh, vegetables of all kinds, desserts and cookies and candies and coffee, tea, milk, uh, juices. Uh, we have a, quite a variety of food over. This is Carlos. What would happen if you cried in space? How would tears react? Over. Uh, Carlos, if you cry in space, you're, you're, the tears just stay kind of in the corner of your eye where your tear duct is. And uh, if you did not touch it with your finger, it would just, the ball of liquid, the tear, would, would grow and grow and grow. Uh, 
and then sort of spread across your eyelashes and your eye eyeball itself. Uh, I think it would be hard not to touch it with your finger before that point and uh, and push push the water away. But the 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 biggest force of the water is the surface tension, uh, that and that's what uh, drives how water behaves in space. Over. This is Luis. Is your space suit comfortable? Over. Luis, our spacesuit is is uh, not entirely comfortable. It, it's not really designed to be comfortable. It's designed to keep us alive, and uh, it's formed for when we're sitting in the space in the seat. So when you stand up and walk, it's not it's not very uh, suited for walking. It's more uh, just when you're when you're seated, and it just keeps you alive. So it's not meant to be very comfortable, but it's not so bad. Over. Okay, thank you, Chris, for uh, this. It's a uh, very good uh, Irish contact, but I give the teacher uh, the opportunity to thank you also. Uh, please, Pepe, go ahead, over. Okay, just uh, uh, what uh, I want to say. Uh, thank you, Rich, to you, please. Thank you to everyone that is involved to make it possible. Thank you from Mr. Regaldivia. Please, go. Okay, uh, from the space station, this is Chris. You're very welcome. It's a pleasure to talk to all school children, and, and you guys were, were the same. I loved, I enjoyed your questions, uh, and uh, uh, I, I wish you all the best in this coming school year and in life. This is uh, Chris Cassidy on the space station, Oscar in November for India Sierra Sierra. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you.